bombs did fall on the island during the war, but by accident rather than by design. Either training bombs fell out of aircraft, or German bombers returning from raids being chased by Spitfires dropped their bombs to lighten the load and gain more speed. One man who remembers such an incident is Ernie Radcliffe, who, as a boy of 10, was living out in Abilands just outside Douglas. Although it's more than 75 years ago, Ernie can still remember that eventful night in September 1941. Well, I was uh, living in Ballacorin at the time in Abilands, and uh, I was in bed uh, when obviously the, the a bomb went off, uh, woke me, and uh, within a few minutes after, or a minute or two after, uh, I heard a screech and I realised something was going to happen. I jumped out of bed and by the time the actual explosion occurred, I was in bed with my mother, <laughs> it trust the land and in bed with my mother. The first bomb went off in, uh, at Ballonard Farm actually, uh, well very close to Ballonard Farm, behind the barn. Uh, and the second bomb of course landed here which isn't very far uh, but um, Savlin uh, by plane, I, I don't suppose it took long, but it didn't take me long to get into bed with my mother either. Uh, the next day, uh, with my cousin, uh, we came up to Bella Oats here and uh, we discovered debris on the road, a lot of damage done to Bella Oats Cottage here, and of course there was a big crater up in the, in the field, about, oh, maybe... 50 yards up in the field from here. This one field was known as a bomb field and still is known as a bomb field to us people like. To me as a child it was great exp a great experience this, a bit of excitement, kind of worried as well like, but of course to our parents it was, it was really serious like. There's a little ruined cottage uh, that was known as Castle Ward Cottage. Uh, there was people living in there and one of the lads from what i understand one of the lads was cut in the face with a piece of broken glass uh, other than that to the best of my knowledge that was the only injury that occurred the possibility of being bombed was so terrifying to some people that one douglas resident decided to move to the most remote location on the isle of man his name was Colby Cubbon, and he was a real eccentric, though very wealthy. He lived in Strathallan Road above Derby Castle and existed, it's said, on a diet of buns, cream cakes and spring water. He had a large yacht which he kept permanently in steam in case he needed to escape the island. And he was so terrified of German bombs during the war that he and his mother moved to one of the island's most remote houses here at Erie Cushlin, south of Peel. The irony is that of the very few bombs that were dropped on the island during the war, the majority were here on the side of Cronk Neary Lair, just a few hundred yards away from Erie Cushlin. <laughs> they very nearly got him. Colby Cubbon soon moved back to Douglas, but the bomb craters from that night in September 1940 are still visible. This is one of four bomb craters on the hillside here that were created within seconds of each other on the night of September the 18th, 1940. Apparently, a German bomber returning from a raid over Liverpool, either lost or being pursued by a British fighter, came up the valley here and dropped his remaining bombs in order to gain enough height to get over Cronk Neary Lair. A few moments later, witnesses saw him fly low over Port St Mary and disappear off into the night. The craters are spaced evenly up the hillside, and three of them are clearly visible from the air, though in fact six bombs were dropped. As well as the four high explosive bombs which created the craters, he also dropped an oil bomb and an incendiary bomb. The day after, bits of the bomb were recovered, examined and declared to be of German origin. This led to sarcastic articles in the press asking why the Hun had flown all the way from Germany just to bomb a remote hillside. What a hero. He'd certainly have got the Iron Cross for that. 
The first of the craters is down there and is now full of water and overgrown. But there was a fatality there, caused by the Heath fire as a result of the oil and incendiary bombs. The death made front page news on the Isle of Man examiner the next week. It was a frog, fried.